now as teachers as students as university administration uh, as as policy makers we are all in one capacity or the other uh, uh, let's say affiliated with higher educational institutions higher education commission of pakistan uh, which came into being under higher education commission ordinance in year 2002 and is binding on all higher education institutions in the country whether operating in the public or the private sector formulated a policy on sexual harassment in higher education institution Vi uh, violations or failure to comply with higher education commission which i will now refer to as hec uh, so any violation or failure to comply with hec's policies may lead to regulatory action being taken against non compliant heis or universities uh, this policy introduced by hec is consistent with and has been made in light of the provisions of the protection against harassment of women at the workplace act 2010 and amended then in 2022 it extends the protection against sexual harassment to all members of the hei community and provides the option to the aggrieved persons to seek rec recourse to resources within the hei or to seek redressal through the provisions of the 2010 act under this policy given by higher education commission of pakistan sexual harassment is defined or it means any unwelcome sexual advance request for a sexual favor or other verbal or written communication or physical conduct of a sexual nature or a sexually demeaning attitude where number 1 submission to such conduct is made either explicitly or implicitly Uh, a term or condition of an individual participation in an activity at the university or a higher education institution further submission to a rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as a basis for academic or employment decision affecting that individual in simpler terms this means that uh, let's say you know if somebody is is conducting sexual harassment and as a result of which Uh, the aggrieved is let's say you know denied a certain promotion or is denied their uh, academic merit then they are indeed aggrieved further under this act such conduct has the pur purpose or effect of unnecessarily interfering with an individual's academic or work performance or of creating an intimidating hostile or offensive educational or working environment now the the behaviors which are prohibited under uh, this policy given out by higher education commission of pakistan now it includes number 1 especially egregious non consensual acts this may uh, include let's say you know an extreme act like rape or an attack under which of course a person has a right to either complain within the hei or to take up legal action as laid down by uh, the law prevailing in the country further a prohibited behavior can include non consensual sexual contact it can include sexual exploitation now these two terms actually mean uh, that let's say you know it could include uh, sending or sharing of photographs or videos which are of an inappropriate nature it could include uh, things like uh, in, uh, let's say uh, something which is not uh, an outright sexual assault but but minor uh, let's say sexual advances further prohibited behaviors include uh, you know other pervasive or swear behaviors such as sharing of uh, vulgar jokes uh, whether it is through you know mobile phones whether it is through social media whether it is uh, physically in a meeting or an environment so all those uh, things actually constitute prohibited behavior under this particular policy and lastly uh, what it includes is sex discrimination that is being denied your academic merit or being denied chances of employment just on the basis of one's sex now what what are higher education institutions or universities bound to do under this policy the hei's shall designate at least two members of the hei administration who will act as focal persons for harassment now at least one of those two designated uh, administrative officers who will act as focal persons one of them shall be a woman to offer support and immediate assistance to those who have experienced sexual harassment 
contact information of such individuals shall be made easily available, including its display on the higher education institution or university's website. The HEI shall also constitute an inquiry committee to investigate and adjudicate any allegations of prohibited conduct. Now, those who have experienced sexual harassment may also contact members of the inquiry committee for support and advice. Now, the HEIs or universities will also make the procedure of filing a complaint uh, uh, very transparent and obvious to all the people involved in, with the higher education institution environment. Any person who has experienced sexual harassment can lodge a complaint either to the focal person or to any member of sexual harassment inquiry committee or uh, again uh, in consistence with the provision of the 2010 harassment act a person can file a complaint to the ombudsperson as soon as a complaint or report is received by one of the designated resources it shall be shared by him or her within a period of 24 hours with all focal persons and members of the inquiry committee for further action all complaints alleging sexual harassment shall be forwarded to the inquiry committee within 24 hours of being received by the focal person or any other office of the university or HEI. As soon as it is reasonably practicable after receiving such a complaint, the inquiry committee shall determine whether the alleged conduct in the complaint meets the criteria of this policy. It is determined by a majority of the members of the inquiry committee that the alleged conduct meets the aforementioned criteria then a formal investigation shall be initiated. After initiating the investigation and not later than three days of the receipt of a written complaint, the inquiry committee shall firstly communicate to the accused the charges and statement of allegation level against him or her, the formal, the formal written receipt of which will be uh, given by the accused. Further, the committee will require the accused within seven days from the day the charge is communicated to him or her to submit a written defense and on his or her failure to do so without reasonable cause, the committee shall proceed ex parte. Then the committee will inquire into the charge and may acquire and examine such oral or documentary evidence in support of the charge or in defense of the accused as the committee may consider necessary, including by summoning a potential witness. And each party shall be entitled to cross-examine the witness against him or her. After the inquiry is, com is completed, the, uh, 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 there may be, uh, if the, uh, you know, the different kinds of penalties may be imposed. Now, if a respondent is a student, the committee may issue a warning or a reprimand or it may issue a disciplinary probation, or it may withhold a degree for a certain period of time, or it may uh, recommend uh, suspension or expulsion, or it may recommend or impose campus service, or it may uh, suggest or impose relocation from campus building, or it could include exclusion of the respondent from a designated portion of, of the university or HEI building or grounds, or it could include inclusion of decision in the student's record, except in the case of the first instance of a minor violation for up to seven years. Now, if the respondent is a member of the faculty, a researcher, or an employee, or a staff of the university, uh, the committee may uh, you know, give an oral or a written reprimand or warning. It may carry out counseling or training. It may uh, you know, include, uh, include the decision in the personal file of the respondent, or it may lead to an exclusion of the respondent from a designated uh, portion of the university building or ground, or from one or more designated university activities where such penalty is appropriate to the offense and where the penalty does not prevent the respondent from carrying out his professional duties. The committee may impose a fine. The committee may recommend for suspension of the respondent without pay, the committee may recommend that dismissal proceedings be commenced or, you know, it, the committee may sanction as deemed appropriate 
in accordance with the terms of the employment uh, rules, other penalties. Now, uh, once, uh, you know, let's say uh, uh, certain penalties have been, uh, have been, let's say, uh, you know, imposed, universities and in particular uh, universities in general and in particular virtual university aims to create a safe working environment that is free of harassment, abuse and intimidation to fulfill individuals' right to work with dignity. So, you know, before anyone wants to lodge a complaint, the complainant must make himself or herself understand the definition or, uh, you know, they must understand what harassment means and only then should they file a complaint. Now, once the complaint, once you know, an individual feels that filing such a complaint is necessary, the complaint may contain comprehensive statement of all facts with all necessary details relating to an incident of harassment at the workplace. The complaint may contain all documents, evidence, or other supporting material in whatever form it may be, such as audio, video or documentary or in any other form. The complaint may contain name of witnesses. The complaint may contain any other material, detail, evidence or person which will be relied upon or have any relation with the incident. Further, the complainant shall undertake that information contained on his or her complaint is true and correct to the best of his or her knowledge and belief. Because while it is important, you know, that if you have been victim of harassment, you report it so that nobody else becomes a victim of that harassment or that you do, do get your due justice. But it is also very important to ensure that nobody is falsely accused of harassment or one does not file a complaint which is not completely 100% true. The complainant shall uh, be duly signed, the complaint uh, shall be duly signed by the complainant or if he or she cannot sign, shall fix his or her thumb impression on it. Now, if an, if an individual, whether that's a student, or is a, is a faculty member, staff, or employee associated with the university or a higher education institution, deems that it is necessary to file a complaint, they need to make sure that the complaint contains comprehensive statement of all facts with all necessary details, relating to an incident of harassment at the workplace. The complaint may contain all documents, evidence or other supporting material in whatever form it may be, such as audio, video or documentary or any other form. The complaint may contain names of witnesses. Further, the complaint may also contain any other material, detail, evidence or person which will be relied upon or have any relation with the incident. The complainant shall undertake that information contained in his or her complaint is true and correct to the best of his or her knowledge and belief. Now, why this is most important is because while on the one hand, it is important to report sexual harassment or any other harassment to number one, in order to get justice and number two, in order to ensure that nobody else goes through what the complainant has gone through, it is also important to make sure that a false complaint is not filed because a false complaint or an allegation can also very swearly or badly harm the accused. Therefore, it is necessary for the complainant to ensure that all the facts, all the statements given in his complaint are completely 100% true. The complainant shall therefore duly sign the complaint or if he or she cannot sign, they will fix their thumb impression on it. With this, in this module, we have, you know, shared with you the detailed procedure of filing a complaint in case in, in the capacity of being a student or a faculty member or a staff member, uh, you're, you're, you're subject to any kind of harassment at workplace or any kind of harassment uh, around uh, the higher educational institution. And we also shared with you this policy, which is also freely available on Higher Education Commission's website, where it explicitly says that what constitute as harassment and as sexual harassment, and in case, God forbid, you've been a victim of, of it, what procedure you may follow. The universities and HEIs have, uh, in by, through implementing HEC's policy, in general, established a system for addressing such complaints. 
and virtual university in its capacity is also doing a lot to provide an inclusive and a safe environment for students, teachers, staff, and all employees.